What's going on guys, I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and now that the three major trade shows, CES, Mobile World Congress, CTIA are out of the way, there are a bunch of new phones hitting the market. One, the T-Mobile G2X, awesome phone, announced at CES as the Optimus 2X, dual core Tegra 2 processor, 8 megapixel camera, 4 inch display, it's an awesome phone, it's available on T-Mobile now for $199.99. Another one from CES that was announced, the HTC Thunderbolt on Verizon. Verizon's first 4G LTE smartphone, 1 gigahertz single core processor, 8 megapixel camera, front facing camera, 4.3 inch display, and more. Now both of these are Android devices, both of these are running Android 2.2, but which one's the best? Take a look at messaging on both of these devices and see. Now this comes with two keyboards out of the box. It comes with the Android keyboard and it comes with Swipe, and since this is running Android 2.2, it is the Android 2.2 keyboard that's on it right now. So it's the keyboard you're used to if you've you know, been worked with anything in the past on with Android 2.2. If you've worked with the Nexus S or uh, you're used to the Android 2.3 keyboard because you've rooted, you can get that from the Android market. Just search for gingerbread keyboard and you can download it. In fact, I had, this, uh, I had that keyboard on this device until uh, a few days ago. This one comes with HTC Sense custom uh, keyboard and you can see the differences here. The keys are a little bit different. They're a little bit larger. They're uh, curved as opposed to being kind of those straight boxy keys. And then you have the directional keys down here at the bottom. So some differences there. And that's the only one that this one comes with out of the box. You can always download, like I said, or side load other keyboards, but that's what it comes with out of the box. So let's do the quick Brown Fox is ready to party. They're very easy to use. And then here, let's try this. The Quick Brown Fox needs a ride home. So you can see, again, both you know pretty easy to use. Four inch, key, or four inch display here, 4.3 inch display here. I will always say, I think four inches is the great sweet spot between 3.7 and 4.3 because it's not too large but it's large enough to where people with larger fingers can access it with relative ease. Another thing I like about the G2X is the way it feels in the hand. Like I said, it has that tall, narrow feel to it, so it feels a little bit more like a Droid X as opposed to something like this, which is kind of stubby and, uh, and short, kind of fat, short and fat, so it's a little bit harder to hold in the hand and wrap your hand around it, much like the Evo and the Inspire. This one, to me, the smaller display combined with the narrowness feels better in the hand, easier to hold up to the ear and more. But both keyboards are great. I think, you know, in terms of keyboard uh, support out of the box, I think you'd be happy with either one. So I'm going to declare that a tie. So this is a part of the donk fight where I'm trying something new and I'm handing it over to you for a little bit. But send me, you know, Twitter questions about what you'd like to see on these devices. So we're going to jump into YouTube. This was a question somebody asked. They kind of wanted an idea of what the media sounded like. So we're going to find just a, uh, let's just do a sample video here. Um, we'll do that, for example. And we're going to pause it. Good. Okay. Then we're going to do this as well, just to get an idea of which speaker's louder. Now I will, you know, kind of give you a spoiler here. I have a feeling it's the HTC Thunderbolt, just because it's a much larger speaker. Whereas this speakers are down here with the micro USB charging port on the bottom, and uh, you know, I just have a feeling they're not as loud. But let's try that. Let's do this one first. We'll see here. Okay, so you get an idea. Can't play it too long uh, for copyright reasons, but let's see. Pop open this one. And we'll see which one's the loudest. Yeah, so I'd have to give it uh, hands down to the HTC Thunderbolt there. Much, much louder thanks to that, back, that big external speaker on the back. And better yet, when you have the kickstand open and you're using it like that, that speaker just naturally projects out. So in terms of media use, you know, if you're looking for a straight up speaker, better speaker, the HTC Thunderbolt is going to be the way to go. So you can see, uh, let's jump over here real quick. Another question somebody had was about battery life. Well, I'm looking for uh, what I'm looking for here. Battery life 
Yeah, 1500 milliamp batteries on both of these devices. The G2X, far better battery life than the HTC Thunderbolt. I think Verizon's 4G LTE is just a tremendous battery suck. I mean, it just take, kills, kills battery life. And I mean, you know, even for me, like even with no use whatsoever, just sitting in my car, I get just a little bit over a day to a day and a half before the device powers down. Now with use, I can get about seven hours out of this device with moderate use, text messaging, emailing, calling, things like that. This has surprisingly good battery life. I was a little bit skeptical. I was like, dual core processor, 1500 milliamp battery? Is that really the smartest way to go? I'm not so sure. But uh, they really, you know, it's done a good job thus far. I've been able to make it, you know, for the most part, a full day, at least for a full day of use before it starts to power down around 10 or 11 o'clock at night. So battery life, and that's with moderate use on it as well. So battery life has been surprisingly, uh, surprisingly impressive. Let's try connected media here, for example. I'm going to music. But uh, battery life has been surprisingly impressive on this. In terms of battery life, this wins it hands down. But you can see no music found. I just wanted to show you the music player differences between stock and Android because that was asked as well. So there you go. Fortunately, there's no music on either, either of these devices. I can't really give you a demo, but uh, you can see what they look like. Another question, and I'm getting into this uh, in just a second, Quadrant Standard and, and uh, 4G speeds. We'll get into that uh, in just a second. But somebody else asked about the size. That's what they look like. Again, you know, Thunderbolt, very stubby, very short. G2X, very long, very narrow. Uh, and, you know, it is a smaller display, so that makes it even more narrow in the hand. Four inches as opposed to 4.3, and you can really see that shown off right there. That's them bottom to bottom. And then with it over top, that's what it looks like. So, you know, again, I think easier to hold in the hand, harder to hold in the hand, great music capabilities. Uh, it kinda, I have to knock it a little bit on the speaker capabilities there. Let's jump into Quadrant Standard real quick, see which one comes out on top. Bam. Whoops. Let's go into Quadrant Standard here. We're going to run the full benchmark. Call quality has actually been pretty good on both of these devices. I mean, they do a good job, both T-Mobile and Verizon, in this area. You know, I had the data speed issues, or data issues, period, with Verizon, but uh, call quality has been very good. I took it to a dead spot. Uh, Verizon has a dead spot near the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, and I took it to that dead spot and was able to, uh, you know, make and receive calls. They were exceptionally choppy to the point where I couldn't talk, but I could make them, I could connect the calls um, without having, you know, without incurring any issues. But they were very choppy. T-Mobile, on the other hand, took it to an area in North Charlotte, and uh, same thing. Calls were very choppy, but I, I did hold the calls. They did not drop. So that was a good thing. Um, both of those have been great on call quality front. Earpieces have been nice and loud. Again, the biggest frustration with the Thunderbolt, it is a 4G LTE device. Verizon's 4G is awesome, but I don't get connectivity constantly, which is just frustrating, very, very frustrating. Let's see, force close. Let's do that again, run full benchmark. It tried to start back up again. You know, quadrant standard, it's kind of funky. And then let's see, 2,358. So quadrant standard score here, 2,000. 358. Now I've seen it between 2300 and 2700 depending on when it's ran, but uh, right now 2358. So what I was saying about this, you know, 4G speeds are just dis constant disconnects. And I've reached out to a couple of other people that have 4G devices and they've experienced uh, similar things. And that's across the board with the carriers, all of the carriers 4G products. I seem to see that pretty regularly. Things just power off or the 4G stops working and I'm assuming that's some network growing pains. But 2,358 here, this is gonna pop up in just a second. 2,358 here, 1,710 here. So the, in terms of the speed tests, the G2X blows past the HTC Thunderbolt, at least on Quadrant Standard. Let's take a quick look at speed test and jump in and take some of those numbers into consideration as well. Speed test, speed test. and both loaded, for whatever reason, the Charlotte server just died a couple weeks ago, so. Having to do it on a little small town uh, that's north of here, so hopefully that will work. Now you look at uh, some of these numbers here, for example, 32 megabits per second. This um, seems exceptionally fast. These numbers, speed test to my knowledge, is still having issues uh, keeping up with Verizon's 4G LTE. So keep that in mind. You know, average download speeds are between about eight to 13 megabits per second, upload between about five and uh, seven is what I've seen in this area. So keep that in mind. Uh, those are a little bit exaggerated. Speed test, last I heard speedtest.net actually can't calculate 
this stuff, but let's do a restart just to see. Over here, 3.5 megabits per second, upload pretty low. So in terms of LTE uh, versus HSPA+, Plus, you know, LTE takes the cake by a mile, but there's nothing more irritating to me. See what I'm saying? Network, commu network communication issues is doing it right now. Uh, there's nothing more irritating to me than when the network cuts in and out in the middle of uploading video or doing work or doing something like that and uh, it cuts out. So I mean, while LTE is fast, it's pretty useless if you can't have a seamless experience. So it's a uh, it's a tough call there, but just on soul speeds alone, it goes to the HTC Thunderbolt. So there you have it, but only one of these can win the dogfight. And as always with these high-end devices, it's always a challenge to figure out which one is the best. Now that said, I'm giving it to the T-Mobile G2X. The G2X is the winner of the dogfight because it is the highest spec device out here. It's far better, in my opinion, when it comes to day-to-day -day tasks. It's very fast. That NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor, I mean, just zips through things with no lag whatsoever. I mean, open, close, open, close. I mean, there's no lag, no issues. And that's because, one, the processor's fast. Two, it's running a stock build of Android 2.2. It also has a nice range of features. It has the front-facing camera, 8-megapixel camera in the back, HDMI capabilities, and it's you know a nice high-end device from LG that's getting gingerbread soon. Don't get me wrong, Thunderbolt's an awesome device, Verizon's first 4G LTE device, and really the network speeds are far faster here. The problem is it keeps cutting in and out. So to me, this and you may you may be different here, but to me, it's no good unless I can get a consistent 4G LTE connection. This whole cut in, cut out just keeps us from working or keeps me from being able to work. But I think all around the package deal, the G2X is the way to go. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with both of these devices. You think I'm crazy? You think it's the smartest thing ever? Let me know. PhoneDog underscore Aaron. And if there's any other questions you have about these devices, let me know as well. And as always, be sure to like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash PhoneDog. We're giving away a ton of prizes as part of our colossal iPad 2 and smartphone sweepstakes. A bunch of prizes, a bunch of opportunities to win. Check it out. Facebook.com slash phone doc. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time and keep it locked on the site this week because a ton of dog fights are coming up with the G2X, like the iPhone 4, the Samsung Galaxy S4G, and more. Exciting stuff, so keep it locked on phone We'll see you next time.